So this is Olmstead, the dining room. Obviously, it's not really a dining room anymore. We've pushed all the tables to the side. I like to make the joke that we're a little bit of like a bodega, but instead of a bodega cat, I got my dog. Uh, right, Spud? We're gonna start getting our day going with uh, the food bank and the trading post. This is Ben. He heads up the kitchen when it comes to the, the food bank stuff for the most part. This is his little world. This is Jackson. How y'all doing? We're not live streaming this, are we? Say hi to mom. <laughs> <laughs> We're on Twitch. <laughs> See, morale's still high. These guys showed up on day one when we opened up the food bank, so they're the ones that are holding down the floor here. Why did you do it, guys? <laughs> I didn't really think twice. Yeah, just uh, get out there and help out. Folks are hungry. We're getting a lot of beans right now, and we're getting a lot of farro, and so Ben takes it upon himself to make sure that, you know, every day, because we get repeat guests, that we try to put out a different meal. All right, thanks. Bye. All right, we gotta go to the hospital now. Yeah. So this is the beans, farro, kale, pork belly dish for frontline workers that we're gonna go deliver. So on any given week, we do somewhere around two to 300 meals just for frontline workers. We get $10 a meal to help fund the bank in exchange for providing food for the hospitals. And so the more we can do that, the more we can keep the, the food bank going. Where are you guys from? This is a restaurant over by Prospect Park called Olmstead. Olmstead? Olmstead, yeah. Barbecue place? Nah, I wish. Oh. Oh. <laughs> Thank you so much. This made a lot of difference for us in, in the time that we had COVID. Really, I mean, My sister did a residency here. Wonderful. We're not alone in this. Yeah. We're all together. Thank Bye, you. guys. Thank you. So now that we're eight weeks into this, we are preparing meals for three different avenues. One is for the store, frontline workers, and for the food bank. Once we get back from the hospital, the deliveries start to come in, the donations start to come in, and we're menu planning for tonight. Dude, this is so much, man. Yeah, it's a lot. This is Mac, my friend. DeBraga very graciously just donated a ton of stuff. They've donated in the beginning and uh, sort of throughout the whole process. They just brought us a whole bunch of beef hearts, uh, beef trim. That goes to the chef's counter. All of a sudden his whole business shut down. And so in the beginning it was like perishable. Then it was like, what can they do to help? And now that we're eight weeks into it, it's, it's the freezer. Which is exactly it. I mean, now it's looking at items that probably aren't going to move that used to move in, in the old times. So we're gonna probably take uh, some of the trim and some of the hearts and grind it. Honestly, we'll probably make some type of uh, hamburger helper kind of a thing for tonight for the food bank. So we're in the sh we, we While we were uh, delivering to the frontline workers, these guys had someone knock on the door for uh, a church in Red Hook. So everything that we were gonna use that we had ready for tonight, Unfortunately or fortunately, however you look at it, is out the door. We open at four. We kind of got to move fast. Down. We started out by trying to produce food for, for unemployed restaurant workers. We'll grind a couple of uh, beef hearts in there too for flavor. And within hours of being open, that became just anyone that needs it. And we try to get anything we can get our hands on that someone might need. We're, we're not being creative because we want to be creative with the food. We're being creative because we need to make random stuff like celery taste good because we've got truckloads of celery one day. It's about nourishment and reaching as many people as necessary. We're not just operating a food bank. We're operating a food bank in a pandemic. Just coming up with different things to do with beets, you know, turning those beets into a roasted side or a, like a pickled beet salad the next day, that's definitely it's definitely hard, for sure. I would just start taking this and celery and just start s small dicing it. And then that way we could sweat it out, add all the ground beef to it with that and uh, a whole bunch of uh, Jasper Hill cheddar cheese. And then that way when they microwave it at home, it'll all melt and be gooey delicious. Good? All right. We'll roast it all off. We'll get the pasta going in a minute. And then we'll start to make like a little bit of a sauce and, and Make it tasty. You know, there's like a lot of lot that comes with 
operating the food bank. It's not just Olmsted is now a food bank and everything, that's the only variable that's changed, you know? We don't have dishwashers, we don't have front of the house, we don't have repairmen to come to fix something when it's broken because there's no money to do that. It's me and these guys and whoever comes to help, you know? I'm gonna go look for some, some like tomato product. We wanna build flavor with it. For the most part, the way we receive financial donations are through the Lee Initiative. So people, if they wanna support us, they donate to the Lee Initiative and then they distribute it to the food banks that are having the roughest time, basically. Hamburger Helper, brought to you by the great people of Tabasco. <sighs> Life hasn't gotten any easier with my restaurant shut down. But how, how important is our relationship? In a world of isolation, it's nice to have this guy. Okay. So we're gonna go through our little uh, Jumanji hallway here. Now that we're entering this new chapter of how do we reopen the business, how do we start bringing back more employees, we have just opened up a store uh, in our private dining room. We're calling it the Olmstead Trading Post. So this was like a really beautiful room that my dad uh, drove out from Chicago to build. I, don't, I think my dad would be a little offended that I had to put a big uh, refrigerator in here, but you know, we gotta make do. So up until this point, we haven't made any income, you know? So uh, it's time to try to juggle both the food bank and, and saving the business. So this is the team. Oh, I can't hug you, I was gonna hug you. This is Alex, Alex and I know each other from our uh, Blue Hill Out Stone Barns days. I, when I was the chef, he was the pastry chef. We have stories. We have stories, <laughs> lots of stories, yeah. People like his stuff, so this is all, like all this work is gonna be gone in like two hours and we're still trying to figure it out. Especially he just came up with the, uh, is this this one? Oh yeah, the sauerkraut the one. Sauerkraut. It's like sourdough bread with sauerkraut. He can't keep up with them. You wanna slice it up? No, 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 no. We need to sell it. We're not cutting into that thing. Well, he's on social media, so he's like, let's cut it. Do you want me to cut one of these sauerkraut breads? It's beautiful inside. He doesn't want me, but I think everybody has to, has to see how beautiful this bread is from the inside. Now I'm getting in trouble. <laughs> need to say something inappropriate? No. Okay, good oh, you did it? You asked. <laughs> It's the new Cronut, it's the new Cronut. Mark my words. In addition to never owning or operating a food bank, I've also never owned or operated a grocery store. This is nuts. So there's just been a lot of curveballs. Well, it's two o'clock and we're about to open up the stores. We just filled this with yesterday with stuff and it's all gone and we're having a hard, like, a hard time keeping up. Catherine, what have we learned about doing a store? I learned that this stupid, ugly thing cost $1,300. Keep producing to keep up with demand, which is the best problem to have. We are not the place where it's like, we make 50 a day and it runs out and screw whoever was waiting in line. So it feels uncomfortable for us because we don't have that right now. We don't like, we don't like that we're doing that, but we have to start making money. All right, you want me to do the music? Yeah. I can do it. It's, we're not, it's not. I, I, it's, I tried everything. No, all you, right. I know, you just. Other things I don't know how to do. This is what 15 years of working in three Mission Star restaurants gets you. Pounding on a stereo to get. How do I do this? All good problems because it's busy, but it's a lot of logistics. Anything that people want to eat and pay for is on the table right now. For all day? Two by one by one. Me being from Chicago. I'm making four Chicago style Italian roast beef sandwiches to save Olmstead. My Wendy's manager would be upset with my station right now. I hate you. I don't mean that. Taylor, I'm officially going down on roast beef sandwiches. <laughs> Here we go. Gotta make it nice and saucy. You know, in the beginning, I kept using this phrase of like, the Olmsteads of the world are gonna make it. Uh, I'm worried about the Thai place that I just ordered from for staff meal. Uh, I just pulled a Cronenberg out of the walk-in and started throwing it. 
<laughs> I want to also grab this escargot dishes that are new. They just sell them? Yes. Sure. I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't say that the homesteads of the world are going to make it anymore. And so, you know, it's a lot to sit on when I just killed myself for 15, 20 years of working at all these restaurants to have everything just shut. And now I own a grocery store where I'm picking up roast beef sandwiches. You know, I'm still proud of everything that we're doing. Sure. Boom. So this I do remember from Wendy's. Coming in hot, all of them. There we go. The baguette sold already? If there is a silver lining on the Trading Post side, it's that I always wanted to open up a bakery with our pastry chef, Alex Gruner. And so this is sort of us testing that out. Too hot to bring out, chef, or? He's making baguettes right now, and these are the ones that just came out of the oven. We are one hour into our third day. We've been open for an hour and 15 minutes, and we'll be out of bread in probably 45 minutes, which we don't like, you know? We also want to be something that's open seven days a week, just like the food bank, so we're just like a constant. We want to be reliable, you know? That's, that's what matters to us. We try to go, always go above and beyond for the people that are, you know, customers, whether they're for the food bank or for Purchase. Okay, so the store is uh, in terrible shape. No, uh, the store is rocking and rolling, and we're gonna go check on uh, the team over here for the bank. Did you like it, Ben? Is it all right? Yeah. That is pretty good. I might take some of that home. Bud, we got dinner tonight, man. You're gonna get us shut down because you're gonna be on camera. Bud, you want a mask? <laughs> <laughs> Looks like it's coming along kind of nice, right? Got a nice, beautiful beet salad, and uh, the pasta is super tasty. This is our beauty shot. No. I think you're gonna make a uh, good, I think 200. Unfortunately, that means we'll be scrambling again tomorrow. We will literally do this all over again. Yeah. We have volunteers come and sort of assess what's gonna go in the actual bag beyond just the food. And those volunteers start to package it up and put out the signage and get the food bank ready to open. So this is the spread. Ideally we would have more, uh, you know, more canned, uh, canned food. Like we want it to be more than just a, the one dinner, you know? We want it to be worth it to make the trek all the way over here, you know? And we try to uh, just restock it and not really mingle out there so people feel comfortable. It's hard to, it's like a weird thing kind of, you know, what is a successful food bank? Is it when it's no longer needed anymore? Is it, you know, ramping up in numbers? All right, so it's uh, coming on seven o'clock. We're gonna wrap it up. These are gonna be the last of our meals uh, for the day. And then we're gonna start breaking down. Hey, our hats are here. Oh, I gotta sell it, I shouldn't wear it.